Nark. Nark. <coughs> White girl with too much money. <coughs> White girl with too much money. <sighs> Here we go. Velma, the show I had very little expectations for, yet somehow still felt disappointed by it. I expect nothing, and I'm still let down. Velma is HBO's brand new show which offers the latest take on the Scooby-Doo franchise, acting as a kind of origin story to before the gang had formed together, and is being told through the perspective of Velma. But so far all I can say is that this feels like less of a Scooby-Doo, and more of a Scooby-Don't. Sorry. As of writing this review, there have only been two episodes released thus far, and it's already managed to set the bar pretty low. Normally when making a review, I'd like to wait until all the episodes have been released in order to give the show the fairest possible chance. I mean, the first half of Bojack Horseman Season 1 is pretty weak, but then manages to save itself towards the end. But honestly, with how bad these first two episodes have been, and HBO releasing these on a weekly schedule, I honestly don't know whether I can be asked to watch the rest of the series. If I hear by some miracle that the series manages to save itself towards the end, or god help us it somehow manages to get even worse, I'll keep watching and I'll make sure to do a full series review. I think the first thing that baffles me most about this show is why it's even branded itself as a Scooby Doo show in the first place, as it has practically nothing to do with the original series. And it actually feels like that this was a completely separate show that at the last minute had the Scooby Doo brand just slapped on it for marketing sake. First up, it's a Scooby-Doo show that doesn't even feature Scooby-Doo. Apparently this is because the writers thought that Scooby was too childish and was struggling to work him into an adult show. The same adult show that also features two cockroaches banging just over a minute in. I've also read that it was actually down to the show not being able to get the rights to use Scooby as a character, which given the train wreck that it is, is actually much more believable. Shaggy is now referred to as Norville, which though technically it is his official name, again, this was down to some property rights of the character's name not being allowed. None of the characters in this show act anything like their typical selves. Velma is just full of bitterness, Daphne is a stuck up bitch, and Fred is a giant man child. Also, for those of you that are visually impaired, most of the characters are race swapped in this. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Mindy Kaling explains that, the essence of Velma is not necessarily tied to her whiteness, and I identified so much as her character, and I think so many people do. So it's like, yeah, let's make her Indian in the series. This is a bit of a contradictory statement, as you've effectively said that Velma being white had no negative impact on the character, or the way that people related to her, so why would you go to the effort to make her non-white in the first place? I'm sure the answer they would give me is that this gives minority groups more representation on screen, and that a character's race shouldn't matter, but that's hard for me to believe for the show's intention, when there are so many race-based jokes scattered throughout the first two episodes. Why wouldn't he? If I were a rich white dude, I'd kill everybody just to get away with it. Plus the cynic in me says that this wasn't done for representation purposes, and instead more for marketing. As I said in my Pinocchio 2022 review, Randomly race swapping a character has proven to draw more attention and interaction on social media, and whether that engagement is for better or for worse, it still gets people talking about your product. Like, if you want to make a show which features a more culturally diverse set of characters, then by all means go for it. But just make them their own characters. I think a great example of this being done right is with the film Into the Spider-Verse. I remember when the first images were released of Miles and people were instantly critical of how it looked like he was only there as a lazy race swap of Peter Parker, but the film actually went to the effort to make Miles his own separate character in the Spider-Man universe, with a completely different background and environment which defines him into his own person. Not to mention that the film itself is incredibly well written, that obviously had a lot of love and care put into it, and clearly respected the franchise it was stemming from. Compare that to Velma, which seems like it wants nothing to do with the Scooby-Doo franchise, other than dropping a few name references which are used as nicknames for drugs. But you know, let's put all that aside, and let's pretend we don't see this as a Scooby-Doo spin-off series, but instead just watch it as if it were its own show. Maybe then we'll actually be able to see it as somewhat decent, with clever writing, funny jokes, a compelling story, and full of characters who are likeable and relatable. <laughs> but before I go into ripping the show apart too much, I will say a couple of good things about it. First up, it doesn't look terrible. 
The animation is okay, but I do actually quite like the detailed style of the show, especially when we get moments of Velma's hallucinations with the shift in lighting and warped background. The voice cast also do a pretty decent job considering the god-awful lines they have to read. One of which is Frank Welker, who plays Fred's dad. You're embarrassing yourself, Frederick. It's bad enough you still eat pancakes and drink non-alcoholic beverages like a baby. Which, fun fact, is actually the guy who's been voicing Fred throughout the Scooby-Doo series. Okay, so good stuff over. Now onto the bad. First up, the humour, if you can call it that. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. <laughs> it is straight up awful, with its two main categories being social political commentary and meta references. Let's start with the meta jokes. Oh god, the meta jokes. I think meta humour is actually starting to grow tiresome these days. In fact, it's one of the reasons why I stopped watching Rick and Morty, as the show became increasingly reliant on it and it just takes you, the audience, out of the show's immersion. But Velma really takes it to the next level. You can't go more than two minutes without the show trying to show off how clever and self-aware it is. Every time a character thinks something or does anything, it has to be referenced to real life. See, now if this was a show, it'd be super hot if you two kissed. I'm a suspect. I thought lesbians were good at solving crimes. It's like the one positive stereotype perpetuated by cop shows. Normally in pop culture, when a slutty girl is murdered, we're all a little like, well, maybe she deserved it. Wow, after hearing that, I not only feel emotionally hooked, I understand the stakes of your journey, Velma. Oh, sorry I'm not a drunk on the verge of losing custody like every other woman solving murders these days. In teen movies, whenever a girl needs money, a guy sells something and then blackmails the girl into dating him for it. To TV, it's morally okay to deal drugs if your life is just kind of crappy. Like, your kid's sick, you're a widow with a mortgage. You... Oh God, he looks like Hitler! And not just because we compare everyone to Hitler these days. Okay, I'll admit, that last one wasn't terrible. The show even opens up with this prolonged shower scene amongst a group of girls, where they're talking about how pilot episodes of TV shows must always show off a higher amount of nudity. Not only kind of making this painfully unfunny, but also really weird, as from what I've read online, the characters in this show are meant to be 15 years old. Honestly, I'm surprised this wasn't made by Netflix. And then we have all the social political commentary, which for the most part come out of completely nowhere and just feel really unnecessary. Family origin stories are about tall, handsome guys struggling with the burden of being handed even more power. I mean, not to oversimplify a thorny issue, but everyone loves it when white people play Jesus or a professional boxer. On TV shows, the malt shop owner is always a friendly black man or a spicy and meatball Italian. Fred's a rich white guy with a tiny dong. He did it. Those are all white people, Daphne. Minorities on TV can only deal drugs to escape poverty. For a show which is trying to tell people not to make a big deal on race swapping, it sure likes to make a lot of race-based jokes. And let's talk about the characters themselves. Velma is just a cynical arsehole in this show with so much bitterness inside of her. Again, for someone who said they were drawn to the original Velma because of her character, seems weird that you would go and make her such an unlikable person. She's narcissistic, judges everyone, loves to race shame, body shame, gender shame. Norville, who is meant to be her close friend, she treats like shit, and even laughs at him when he confesses his feelings of love to her. But despite all of her flaws, the show is still trying to write her as if she's the smartest person in the universe. It actually reminds me of that comic that went viral a couple of years back, where there's a snarky woman being an arsehole to this seemingly nice guy at work, but the irony here is that the artist who made the comic actually drew themselves as the snarky woman, because they thought she was the likeable cool character in this situation. I get the same vibe from Velma, where the writers think they're making this incredibly witty, hilarious character, and in reality, everyone else just thinks she's a stuck-up wanker. Exactly. I spit truth without a filter. Like every comedian before hashtag me too. Look. Maybe this series is going to have a character arc for Velma that's going to actually address this. Who knows? Fred also got hit pretty hard and is now being reduced to a rich, whiny, pathetic man-child with the IQ of a peanut, whose main trait seems to be that he has a really small penis. No, I'm not kidding. The show loves to mention this fact over and over again. You didn't mention Fred had a tiny dog. Oh yeah, 
Real baby carrot. Daphne's character is just a typical bitchy high school teen. They try to throw in some backstory of how her and Velma used to be BFFs, but now they hate each other, to which we then get an awkward kiss of them at the end of episode 2, which kind of felt really forced. Probably done as just another bit of shock value to own the old school Scooby bands, but little do they know, we speculated Velma's sexuality for years. Especially when Velma does her losing her glasses routine. Yeah, that kills me. Why doesn't she get contacts? Oh, I think it's a lesbian thing. <laughs> the only character that is sort of likeable in this is Norville. Not so much because he's interesting, but just because he's the only one they haven't written to be a Colossus Bellend. They also make him very anti-drug in this show, which is meant to be a little wink and a nod as to how Shag is always being perceived as a stoner. It has something to do with drugs, which I hate. Maybe this is meant to be Shaggy's epic origin story, like how we get to see the Walt before he becomes the Heisenberg. But yeah, that's Velma thus far. A terrible start for animation and humanity in general for 2023. Though what does bring me some comfort is seeing that this show is getting universally dumped on, with even Rotten Tomato critics not being able to salvage it. And like I said before, you know your show's bad when not even Rotten Tomatoes can save you. I imagine this negativity will be blamed on people being a bunch of vile trolls who choose to hate the show out of pure spite, which is the classic defence for when you can't handle criticism. Either way, it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the series plays out, but if you haven't watched it already, I do not recommend checking it out. Though at least with this universal backlash, we should be safe in the knowledge that this show will not get renewed for a second season. No!